Welcome to Cloud On Air, live webinars from Google Cloud. Uh, we're hosting webinars every Tuesday. My name is Colin Frierson, and today we're going to be talking about G Suite security. Uh, we're going to look at MDM, enterprise security and protection, and more. Um, you can ask questions anytime on the platform, and we have Googlers on standby to answer them. With that, let's get started. So one of the things we know is it's becoming increasingly difficult for IT to manage and protect assets at scale. Uh, the average IT organization has thousands of services they're trying to manage, both on-prem and in cloud. And a high percentage of data breaches are caused by employees due to a lack of internal controls, meaning it's very difficult to govern when employees have access to data and when they don't and where that data goes. We're also seeing that Patchwork systems makes uh, you know, the system as a whole much more vulnerable. So meaning you're going to have varying operating systems on-prem, um, varying patch levels on those systems, and those varying patch levels can be exploited by documents, by uh, malicious code um, that are often delivered by email. And the cost of these breaches is going up. Um, the number of breaches we've seen is actually increasing, and data breaches can be catastrophic. So, you know, we understand this really well at Google, and we've been designing our products to try to address these concerns. Um, some of the things we've noticed, you know, 90% plus of phishing attacks start with email. Similarly with malware, we see that, you know, 66% or maybe even a little more um, of malware is actually delivered via email or an attachment via email. So it's really important we, we defend that from the beginning. Um, and again, very high percentage of employee of reported breaches are caused by either employees not understanding where the proper boundaries are, um, being extorted, or by an external threat. Um, and data exfiltration is expensive. We're seeing a super high um, increase in the losses from ransomware over the last couple years. So at Google, we really believe that you know, being in a cloud native can really help you defend against these types of modern threats. Um, there's some amazing capabilities you know, that work across the platform, whether you're in the Google Drive ecosystem directly, um, or in Gmail, or using Chrome Enterprise. Uh, our robust global infrastructure is designed to always be up to date, so no one is ever running an old version of Gmail. Um, we deploy security patches to Chrome on a very regular basis. Um, and the infrastructure is global so that we minimize the amount of time your traffic is actually um, on the web, and we bring it into Google as fast as possible. So as we're building products inside of G Suite, we think about it in a, in a couple of different buckets. Um, proactive, intelligent, compliant, and simple. So what I'm going to do today is kind of take you through each of these areas of work inside of G Suite. Um, and then you know, please feel free to ask questions, and we can dive into any, any area that we need to a little bit more. Proactive, I think, is one of the most important ones. Um, you know, again. You know, we see a ton of spam and phishing campaigns um, that come directly in from email. So being defensive at email is really important. Um, and you know, Gmail is very effective at stopping spam and malware. Um, we have three nines here, which is really, really impressive. And this is hard to do. Um, the, the 99.9%, the, .9 the way we're able to achieve that is actually through machine learning. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a bit, but this is how we're able to classify you know, spam and malware, not just based on signature or by sender reputation. We have a lot of signals that we're able to use. Um, and we also classify at multiple points during message delivery. A um, couple of other interesting things we're doing with machine learning. Um, these are some new stats. We actually just published these a couple weeks ago. Um, every minute, we're at 10 million spam messages prevented from reaching a Gmail inbox. Okay, 10 million per minute, right? This is a huge number. Um, and again, like this is based on that machine learning with 99.9% .9 accuracy rates. Um, over half a million pages indexed and scanned for harmful software. So this is using the Google search engine. We're actually looking for malicious sites, um, sites that host malware, you know, links that might be in your email that would direct you to a page that would do something harmful. Um, 7,000 deceitful URLs, um, browser extensions that may carry viruses, unwanted content, phishing attempts. Again, we're detecting 7,000 new ones per minute. 
Um, and we're also scanning 6,000 instances of software um, that could be malicious to Chrome. So these are you know, binaries that are hosted, and when you download them, Chrome would warn you that this binary may harm your computer. Are you sure you want to keep it? Um, and every minute, two new phishing sites and one new um, two phishing sites and one malware site are found and labeled, so they're added to the Chrome Safe Browsing database. Um, this is only possible with Google Search. Like the search engine and machine learning really make this possible. Um, and talking more about about the email accuracy, um, you know, there's there's a lot of vendors in this space that do you know email detection. Um, what we really think sets us apart is the machine learning that is individualized. So meaning, not only are we able to detect ransomware, um, detect you know, messages, they will morph. So we'll see these messages try to beat signature detection. They'll send millions of emails and try to look to see which ones are the most effective. Um, but we're also able to look for things you know, also that are in the safe browsing database. So when you attach a link, you know, Google will look at where the link goes. And then if it's sending you to a malicious page, we'll stop you from getting there. We'll even strip the link out. Um, and also, this is, doesn't just apply to inbound messages. This applies to outbound as well. So we actually will look for sensitive information that you as a G Suite administrator can configure with our data loss prevention engine, and then detect if content that is leaving the organization meets compliance rules. So you can say, look, if you're, if you're sending emails with a lot of swear words in them, I could block that. If you're sending emails with um, you know, sensitive information like credit card numbers, names, addresses, once it meets a certain threshold, you can warn, block, or um, change routing rules. Uh, the, the email layers of defenses are really cool, and there's a lot of them. So, for example, we're doing a lot of checks pre-delivery, and this is, this is partly how we get to that 99.9%. Um, as a message comes into Gmail, we look uh, not only for uh, rule-based matching, so did the sender, you know, did it come from a sender with a poor reputation? We also are able to even open any attachments in a virtual machine and, and essentially see what they did to the machine. So we'll dump the memory, we'll look at the disk, um, and determine really quickly, usually inside of four minutes, um, if that binary is malicious. This is really how we're looking for zero days. Um, and then, of course, we'll use multiple antivirus engines to look for uh, you know, known signatures. You know, if there's you know, a, a zip file with contents in it, we'll open it, we'll extract it all, and we'll see what's in there. Um, we also look again on message open. So we rerun a lot of these checks on message open. We know that you know, email is happening in real time, so even post uh, delivery, we can check to see, you know, did, did the links in this site, you know, match a new safe browsing data entry? Um, you know, we can display warning banners inside of Gmail. Um, and, you know, going even further, when you open an attachment, if you're opening it in the Gmail web UI, that's actually a sandbox where we're actually opening the attachment. So it's really difficult for traditional, um, you know, like macros or uh, PDF exploits for those to execute inside the Chrome sandbox inside of Gmail. Um, again, looking at safe browsing links on link click. So before you click on anything, we're going to check for the safe browsing database about where you're about to be headed. Um, we're also sending things like reply. So if someone is impersonating your domain, so they've spun up a domain that's very you know, similar to yours, they have a character or two that's different, and they're asking for information, Google will automatically warn a user that, hey, you're about to send information that's sensitive outside the domain. Are you sure you want to do that? Um, Again, also doing data loss prevention checks when you're doing an OAuth grant. So if someone's trying to ask you to click on a link that authorizes a third-party application to your uh, G Suite applications, we can actually look at DLP before we send any information to that third party. Um, finally, some of the best ones are password verification and uh, password reset. So we'll do two-step verification when we see suspicious um, you know, login attempts. Um, and we can also challenge um, when someone's sending you like password reset emails, we'll make sure those are really coming from, from secure sources. Um, I think it's also important to acknowledge that we can interlock a lot of these protections with Chrome OS. Uh, Chrome OS is, is one of the most secure computing platforms on the market today. Um, and we're not only combining all of those uh, capabilities that we just talked about, but we're combining it with a secure foundation for the client. So meaning um, the device uh, the firmware, the OS, are all designed with security in mind. So a um, couple examples here. Uh, the first one is every Chromebook on the market is fully encrypted. Um, that's by design. Like, we don't offer, there isn't a Chromebook on the market today you can find that isn't fully encrypted. Um, and actually, we're, we're encrypting the, the user space. Um, the OS itself uh, is actually open source, so there's, there's no need to encrypt that. 
Um, the firmware is also designed to have secure boot. So meaning um, anytime Chrome OS, every time Chrome OS boots, we actually check to make sure the, the OS is intact with firmware. And if something's wrong, you'll, you'll rarely see that screen that says, hey, something's wrong. You need to insert a USB drive and you know, re-image your Chromebook. Um, and again, the OS platform is managed by Google. So we're delivering security updates every six weeks. Um, or if you want to opt into the beta or dev channels, you can get updates even faster. Uh, but again, like there's, you won't find Chromebooks that are running really old versions of Chrome. We automatically push these updates, um, and we, we can really stay ahead of the curve with patching. All right. With that, let's, let's talk about intelligence. So today, we actually have 3 billion devices that are checked with safe browsing technology. Um, and we're, you know, again, scanning the entire internet uh, for harmful software um, and for malicious sites. And we want to make all of this data available. So one of the, the tools we just launched in G Suite is called Security Center. Security Center is a place where administrators can go to look for um, you know, data on everything that would be relevant to someone who's a security professional. So how many phishing emails are my, am I getting in my domain? Is it trending up or trending down? Um, you know, how many of them are blocked? How many of them are blocked retroactively? Um, you know, how many links am I getting that contain malware? How many attachments contain malware? Um, and then even data on how the users are behaving. You know, how many OAuth links that I, you know, is a user creating? What applications have they authorized to see data inside their domain? Um, you can even retroactively go back and revoke. Uh, finally, in Security Center, I think one of the coolest features is, the, is an assistant, a security assistant that we have. So it actually provides recommendations and best practices um, for security in the domain. Um, and you can see, um, you know, recommendations like, hey, if you have your super admins and they don't have two-factor authentication turned on, you should turn that on. Um, and you can, you can accept those recommendations or you can say, yeah, I, I accept the risk. So it's, it's live, so it will interact with you as you um, go through it. Really important tool, I think, to, to take a look at. The second one is data loss prevention. So uh, this tool's been around in Gmail for a while. Um, we launched it in Drive earlier, or uh, late last year. Um, so DLP and Drive will actually let you look for sensitive content across your entire organization. So meaning when you're looking for things like you know, names, credit card numbers, sensitive data that would likely be the source of a breach, you can apply rules programmatically to that data. So what that means is you can allow users to share you know, so long as the content isn't filled with names or credit card numbers or social security numbers. We can hold all that on Google platform, by the way. We have lots of compliance certifications showing that we can do that. But you want to make sure that your users are still behaving in a way that's you know, governed by the security policy. Um, this is actually a tool that was built by Google um, you know, for itself. We actually built this as part of a log sanitization engine. Um, so it's trained with machine learning. It runs at scale um, and operates uh, actually in a very similar way that our Gmail scanning works. Every time someone makes an edit, DLP reruns, reevaluates the rules. Um, so it, it works on live documents, and of course, it works even with non-Google native objects, you know, like Word documents, PDFs, images, things like that. Great. So with that, let's let's talk briefly about compliance. So uh, at Google, we have a we have a pretty simple philosophy when it comes to compliance, and that is we should find the strongest technical uh, certifications and attestations we can find globally, and and adhere um, to those standards. Um, so this has been a huge body of work for Google, um, and we've been looking at things like the ISO series um, 27001 uh, is you know your, your your standard cloud security attestation. 2717 is uh, the the list of all those technical controls, and ISO 2718 is actually the cloud privacy standard. So it makes sure that the data that you put inside of G Suite um, is private from both a multi-tenancy perspective. Um, it's private from the host, like which would be Google, um, and private from any third parties Google does business with. So it's a really strong standard. Um, really happy we got that a couple years ago. Um, we also offer SOC reports. Um, so if you need an SSAE report um, or a Type 2 report, we can definitely provide that. Um, and G Suite is FedRAMP certified at the moderate level. So this has also been around for a while. But again, it, it attests to the strength of the controls that we have in place. Um, we're also you know, gearing towards regulatory compliance. So things like you know, the US, it's healthcare with HIPAA. So we want to make sure that you know, if you're storing health-related information in G Suite, we can protect that data adequately. Um, also similarly with GDPR in the EU. So we want to make sure that even you know, the data in G Suite is held to the highest privacy standards 
um, and the EU is really leading on this. Um, it's worth mentioning, we offer this to all of our customers. Um, we don't differentiate between the editions, so regardless of what G Suite edition you're in, um, we're gonna offer these to you uh, no matter where you are. A um, couple of the commitments, you know, there's never any ads in G Suite. Um, Google does not collect your data. We don't scan it for advertising. We don't create archetypes. We don't do any of that in G Suite. Um, you don't have to believe me in this. It's in our terms of service for G Suite, so you can look at the contract. It's very, it's very clear. Um, you own the data. This is also in the contract. Google commits that um, we have no intellectual property rights on any of the data you put in G Suite. It's 100% yours, and you're also responsible for the content. Um, and your apps are always available. We offer an, a really high SLA. Um, we also have public dashboarding to show you know, the status of our applications. Um, this, this SLA includes no time for maintenance. So we're always going to be at three nines. You know, we do maintenance kind of all the time. Um, we do patching all the time. So we're always gonna be on the latest version and we're never gonna take you down for you know, a maintenance window you know, at some horrible time in the night. Um, we're, the G Suite is global. There's, it's, it's always daytime and working somewhere. Um, we also really commit to control. This is really important. Um, you know, that, this, this to me means two things. One thing is you can always take your data out of Google if you need to. We don't want you to feel like you're trapped here. So if you've been using Google Docs um, or Google Slides, you can always export that in industry formats or open formats. Um, and you can also delete your data. So if you tell Google, hey, I want to delete all of this data, we're contractually committed to, to deleting that for you and you know, processing that command. Um, and again, we have these commitments in contract. You can read more about them in the terms of service or in the data processing amendment. Um, last one is simple. You know, all these security controls are great. Um, the philosophy here is uh, if, if they're not simple and it's not very easy for users to use it, typically that's how workarounds get created and, and um, problems occur. So the first one is around the administration side. Um, the, the administrator tools that are in G Suite's central admin panel are really easy to use and straightforward. Um, I use the search panel a lot. The search panel is really helpful, and we even support natural language query in the search bar. So if you type password resets, you know, we'll, we'll understand what that means and we'll direct you to the right place. Um, we also include tools in here for Chrome management. So if you need to administer Chrome devices, whether those are um, signed in Chrome devices or um, Chrome OS devices, uh, we can manage those from here. We include our mobile device management in here, so you can manage iOS and Android devices. Um, and we also support information rights management through this console. So you can determine rules for you know, when content has a certain requirement, um, you know, are, is that content allowed to be taken offline, taken out of the domain, et cetera. Really powerful. Um, there's also controls for team drives in here. Um, one of the new things we launched recently was pro is called protected team drives, which will let you uh, actually define rules about content in a drive so that content, you know, no matter what, can't be taken offline, can't be taken um, you know, out of the domain, you can even restrict copy and print. It's really powerful. Um, our, our mobile device management and cloud identity is also becoming really popular. So we have a ton of devices now that are under uh, management. Um, and we've actually recently simplified um, how much uh, weight we have on the device in order to put mobile device management on there. So um, we're calling this like MDM Lite because we don't need an agent anymore to enforce basic policies, things like encryption and passcodes. Um, and we also still support, of course, you know, you can push a full agent and have even more control. Um, this is actually on by default now for new domains, um, which is really exciting. You know, we definitely want to make sure administrators have control when users are accessing their data from a mobile device, whether it's Android or iOS. Um, finally, I want to spend a little bit of time on security keys because this has been key to even Google's corporate strategy. Um, you know, we're, we, we, of course, uh, eat our own dog food, so we, we use um, G Suite tools and Gmail services just like you know, all of our customers. Um, and security keys are paramount to our strategy for preventing um, phishing attacks and preventing account hijacking. Um, remember one of the stats I quoted earlier was, uh, you know, over 70% of uh, phishing campaigns, um, you know, start with an email. Security keys are another layer of defense for us there. So suppose a, a phishing email gets through and an employee clicks on the link. Um, the bar we set with security keys was we want to build a credential that's so strong that it's um, nearly impossible for a bad actor to steal it. Okay? Security keys are how Google has accomplished that. Um, since we deployed security keys, we've had, no we've had no reported or detected G Suite account hijackings 
post-deployment. So that means an employee who has a security key, um, you know, there have been lots of attempts to steal their credential. None have been successful that we've detected or have been reported. So security keys work by actually doing something very different than traditional authentication. Traditional authentication requires you to demonstrate to the server that you are who you say you are. What's fundamentally different about security keys is security keys require that the server demonstrate to the client that it's trustworthy. So now we're doing bi-directional authentication. Okay? So when you're authenticating with a security key, um, you know, the server actually demonstrates to the client that it really is who it says it is. You're really in a TLS connection with the, with the server. There's not a man in the middle. Um, there's not a bad actor phishing page. And that, that credential that you send can't be replayed or reused. Um, we have a great white paper on this. Um, if you want to know more, uh, we can, I can tell you like, about our, our experience with security keys, which is a public white paper. Um, or you can learn more about U2F from the FIDO Alliance. So all that being said, we really believe that you know, our strength is better together. You know, combining the strength of G Suite with Chrome and Android and even GCP is really going to help you build a security framework um, that is extended beyond the traditional perimeter. Um, you know, as employees become more mobile, as identities uh, really start to span outside of the traditional perimeter, um, we think we're building you know, the, the most powerfully secure cloud platform you can adopt um, out there. So tying it all together, um, we want default on mobile device management. Uh, so we want to be able to say, like, yep, users who are signing in and accessing uh, Google data from mobile device managed services are going to be you know, following basic rules, like, is my device encrypted? Uh, you know, do I have a passcode on my lock screen? Things like that. Um, advanced anti-phishing capabilities. So again, this is when we're, we're using Chrome. Any link we click on, any email that we get, any attachments that's, that's delivered to our mailbox is going to be scanned. We're going to be looking for bad behavior and blocking that by the end user by default. Um, deploying security keys to the organization. So we're doing the strongest 2FA possible. Um, and we're making sure that users who are coming in really are who they say they are. And they're authenticating to, to the real servers and not to um, a hijacked or malicious place. Um, Using the security console in G Suite and DLP to make sure the rules of the organization are followed and content is where it belongs and not being shared um, you know, either accidentally or maliciously. Uh, and then finally, using a tool like Google Vault to assure legal compliance um, with all of the, the data that you're putting in G Suite so you can support things like eDiscovery. Um, with that, I definitely want to thank everyone. Uh, stay tuned for a live Q&A, and we will be back in less than a minute. All right, we're back with questions. Uh, so a couple questions from the audience. Do I need a separate security key for each account I log into? Uh, this is a great question. So uh, security keys, the relationship between keys and accounts is actually many to many. So uh, for any particular Google account, you can actually register um, a very large number of security keys uh, with that account. So you don't have to have just one in case you lose it. Um, and that key can actually be used to unlock many accounts. So uh, 
you know, in my case, like, you know, my one security key will unlock, you know, my corporate account, my personal gmail.com account, um, as well as a bunch of other demo accounts. Um, and it even works for other third party sites, you know, sites like GitHub, Facebook, um, Dropbox, they all support security keys natively. So you don't need to get a separate key for each service. Um, and you can have multiple keys for your services so you don't have to worry about losing your one key. Um, does Google encrypt data at rest? Um, yes, we do. Um, Google actually encrypts everything by default um, with no action required by the administrator. Uh, we actually have a great white paper on this that talks about how we encrypt data. Um, so if you want to learn more, you know, search for uh, G Suite data encryption and we'll tell you how we encrypt you know, data both in transit and at rest. Um, the great thing is you can't turn this off, so it's always going to be on, um, and G Suite's really fast, so it's, it's a great, great feature of the platform. Um, how does Google Vault and DLP work with the new Gmail UI confidential mode? Um, so Vault and DLP functionality don't change. So DLP scans run on send or receive. Um, so DLP runs anytime you're sending or receiving a message, so even if you're in confidential mode, we will still run DLP checks. Um, and Google Vault works the same way. We will still vault and archive messages, um, you know, re regardless of whether using confidential or not. Uh, are DLP and Security Center available for all G Suite um, for business or only enterprise? Uh, this is a good question. Um, I'm always we're always moving the addition things. Um, I think Security Center uh, and DLP are in enterprise for sure. Um, I'm gonna have to check on whether they're in the business queue or not. I don't remember. Um, I think, like for some customers that were grandfathered on business before we launched Enterprise, probably have access to some of these features. Um, I'm not an expert on SKUs, I apologize. Uh, does Drive DLP scan current fires or only ones that have subsequently been uploaded or created? Um, Drive DLP scans everything. So um, when you first launch a Drive DLP rule, we'll actually scan everything in the organization. So if you set a policy, if, if it's your first policy, um, you'll see a pop-up that says um, it may take up to 24 hours for this rule to take effect. Um, but that's because we're scanning all of the shares inside the organization. So we're looking across you know, any existing shares. Um, and again, like once the rule is enacted, we're looking on every edit. So if I have a bunch of confidential information and I'm sharing a document with someone and I paste all that information into the document, DLP will run as part of that and then subsequently change my sharing settings um, as a result of that. So even if, if I'm in a live document and I'm typing, and as soon as my the, the keystrokes I, I type create a social security number or whatever the DLP rule will detect, um, it will block and change that sharing setting. Um, so it works on everything. All right, is that all the questions we have? Yep, okay. Well, thanks so much for watching. Um, tune in next Tuesday for uh, another edition of Cloud on Air.